Hi, and welcome back to the Implementing and Administering Cisco Solutions, the CCNA 201 video series course by EC Council. My name is Glenn Singh. In this video, we are going to discuss the fundamentals of understanding static routing. So let's dive on in. Static routes are pretty much the manual way of configuring routes into the routing table. So if you remember in the videos before, a router will not automatically install a remote route in its routing table. It needs to either be statically configured by the network engineer or dynamically learn by a dynamic routing protocol. So with static routing, they are used to explicitly specify a path between network devices. So what this means is if you put a static route, the router will always choose that path to reach the specified destination. However, if a change on a network occurs, static routes do not automatically update within the routing table, like dynamic routing protocol. With dynamic routing protocol, Guess what? The changes happen automatically based on the dynamic routing protocol algorithm. With static routes, the router trusts your decision. Therefore, the router will not make any changes whether a network is available or a network is not available. With static routing, there are a couple of use cases. These use cases can be where static routing provides ease for maintenance on smaller networks. So yes, if you have a very small network, static routing is fine. But as your network grows and you have more and more networks and subnets, implementing static routing only can be a very, very complex task. Static routes are used to forward packets to and from a specific network. As mentioned, you actually explicitly specify a path and the router will always choose that route to reach the actual specified network or specified destination. Furthermore, static routes are also used as a default route. We'll take a look at what these default routes are later in this video. Furthermore, you can use a static route as a backup route. A backup route is used if the primary route to a destination network is no longer available. And a primary route can normally be used in dynamic routing protocol. And let's say the primary route goes down. Well, guess what? The backup route can kick in. Furthermore, or lastly, static routes or static routing can be used as a summarized route or a summary route, which is called supernetting. In other words, it's a very special route that usually contains many other routes, but in the form of a single route. When it comes to static routes, there are many types of routes that you need to know as a network engineer. One type of route is called a network route. A network route is used to specify a path to a destination network. To put simply, this is the most common type of route that we will be using in CCNA. And here we can see the commands to actually configure an IPv4 network route. Once we are in global config, we use the command IP route followed by the destination network address with the subnet mask for this network address. We can either specify a next hop IP address or the exit interface. Plus, we can also include the administrative distance, but this administrative distance is simply optional. On IPv6 network, we need to enable IPv6 unicast routing. If we do not enable IPv6 unicast routing, the router will not be able to route between IPv6 networks properly. The cool thing about doing IPv6 routing is for network routes, we use a command IPv6 route. As compared to IP route, we use IPv6 route. We specify the IPv6 prefix. We place a slash and then we specify the IPv6 mask, followed by a space here, then 
the Nexop IP address or the actual exit interface. But don't worry, we'll take a look at actually doing some labs on these as well too, to get out some exercises and examples. Another type of route is creating a static route that contains a Nexhop IP in it. If you remember, the Nexhop IP is simply the next router to accept your traffic. So Cisco decided to call this one Nexhop Static Route. And what it is, the Nexhop Static Route is simply used to specify a part where the next router's IP addresses actually use as part of the command. So the actual syntax of the command is IP route, the destination network, the subnet mask, and the next up address. So let's take a look at this example down here. So we are in the router, we use the command IP route. This here is a destination network, then followed by the actual subnet mask, and then we have a next up IP. So what does this say for our router? Well, it simply tells our router if we want to go to the 10.1.1.0 slash 24 network, we need to use this IP, which is 10.2.1.5 to reach there. So our router does not really know how to reach here, but with this route, it simply tells our router to forward a packet to this next sub device, which is 10.2.1.5. There's also an IPv6 next hop static route command. So as we can see here, we must enable IPv6 unicast routing. Then we use the command IPv6 route, followed by the IPv6 network prefix, the slash, together with the IPv6 subnet mask and the next of IP address. So let's take a look at the example. IPv6 unicast routing, IPv6 route. This here is a destination network. There's the slash followed by the IPv6 subnet mask and the IPv6 next of IP address. So we have our destination network together with a subnet mask and this here is a next up address. On a Cisco router, we can even create what we call directly connected static routes. Now typically these directly connected routes are supposed to be there by default, but in terms of the definition, a directly connected static route I use a specify part where the exit interface of the local router is used. So by default, these routes are usually created, but you can also create them manually if you choose. To do that, we use the command IP route, of course for IPv6, sorry, of course for IPv4, we use IP route, the destination network, the subnet mask, and the actual exit interface. The exit interface is the interface that a local router will send that packet out of. So let's take a look at a simple example. Down here we have IP route, which is our IPv4 route. We have a destination network with its subnet mask and we have the exit interface of our router. So what this is telling our router is if you need to send a message to 10.1.1.0 slash 24, send it out of this local interface. As you have already expected, there's also an IPv6 directly connected static route. And this here is a syntax, IPv6 unicast routing. Then we say IPv6 route, followed by the IPv6 prefix slash and then there's an IPv6 mask and the exit interface. In this example, IPv6 unicast routing and the actual static route is IPv6 route. We have the destination network with its, guess what? With its subnet mask and we have the exit interface of our router. 
The Cisco iOS router allows us to create a very special route, well, a very special static route known as a fully specified static route. So what exactly is a fully specified static route? Well, to put simply, a fully specified static route is where both the exit interface and the next up IP address is used within the actual commands. So for a router to reach a particular network, we actually tell in our local router who is the next up IP and which exit interface to actually use. So therefore it's a fully specified route because we did not leave anything out. And if we take a look at the syntax or the actual configuration, we can see for IPv4, it uses IP route, the destination network, the subnet mask, the exit interface, and the next of IP address. And down here, we can see a very simple example. IP route, the destination network, the subnet mask, the local exit interface, which is gigabit ethernet zero slash two, and the actual next of IP address. There is also an IPv6 version of a fully specified static route. Of course, we need to enable IPv6 unicast routing. Then we use a command IPv6 route, IPv6 prefix, which is the actual network, well, the global routing prefix. Then followed by the IPv6 mask, the exit interface, but check this out. We specify the next hop link local IPv6 address, not the global unicast address, but remember the next hop link local IPv6 address. So if we take a look at this example, we'll see IPv6 unicast routing. We use the command IPv6 route. We have the actual IPv6 destination network together with the actual subnet mask, which is slash 64. We have the exit interface, which is gigabit ethernet zero slash one. And we have the next hop link local address. Remember this carefully, it is a link local address. We use a link local address for all local network communication. That's why we specify a network address there within the syntax. Another important route is called the default route. The default route simply directs packets addressed to a network, which is not explicitly listed in the routing table. So what does this mean is this. What if you have a router, the router receives a packet that is destined for a network that does not exist within the routing table. What will the router do? This here is where the default route comes in to save the day. The default route or default routes are configured on edge routers. These are routers that usually point to, let's say an ISP network or a router that is considered to be a stub router that is only one upstream to let's say a neighbor router. To put simply, a default route usually points to the actual internet. Because why? All the internet routes does not exist within your router. So using a default route, Clients within your network can simply send their message to your router and your router will simply use a default route to send the messages to the actual internet. Creating a default route is a bit different from creating a static route. So here we can see the IPv4 version. The command is always IP route and we use these eight zeros in total. So the f so actual destination network is 0.0.0.0. .0. The subnet mask is also 0.0.0.0. .0. Then we can specify either next of IP address or an exit interface. So look at this example here for IPv4. To create a static route where the next up is, well, 10.2.1.5, we use this entire command. It is always IP route 0.0.0.0, .0 space 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0, and then we spa specify the next of IP, or we could spe specify the actual exit interface. 
Additionally, we can also create an IPv6 default route. Definitely we need to turn on IPv6 unicast routing. The command is IPv6 route double colon slash zero. Then we can specify next of IP address or an exit interface. At the example lower here, we can see IPv6 unicast routing. Then we use the command IPv6 route double colon slash zero and then we specify a next hop IP address. When configuring static routes, we also have the option to create a host route. A host route is either in the form of an IPv4 or an IPv6 address within the routing table. They can be installed automatically by the Cisco IOS within the routing table, or they can also be configured as a static host route. But Guess what? They can also be obtained automatically through other methods. Host routes are simply used to route traffic to a specific host rather than an entire network. So let's take a look at some examples of some host routes that were automatically inserted within the routing table. Looking carefully at the highlighted areas, we can see the routing source for these highlighted routes are all else. And notice here that it's actually a host IP address and the subnet mask is actually a slash 32. Hmm. Well, this means that these actual host routes, these routes point directly to a host on a network and using the network prefix as slash 32 simply indicates by telling the router to match all the bits within this network address, which technically is a host IP address within the routing table. If you need to create a host route, you can simply use this command. IP route, the actual destination IP of the host device, and the subnet mask are always 255.255.255.255, followed by either next of IP address or the exit interface. In this example, we can see we use the command IP route, the host IP address, which is 192.168.1.14, followed by the global broadcast IP address. Then we use, in this example, the exit interface. There's also an IPv6 host route as well. And for the IPv6 host route, we use the command IPv6 unicast routing, then we say IPv6 route, followed by the actual host IPv6 address, slash 128, followed by the next of IP address, or the exit interface. In this example, we can see we use the IPv6 unicast routing command, followed by IPv6 route, the actual IPv6 host IP address, followed by slash 128, and the exit interface. When creating a static route, we can also create a floating route. A floating route is simply a static route which has an administrative distance greater than one. Because why? The administrative distance of a static route is one by default. So we can create a floating route or a floating static route with any administrative distance that we choose. And this is very useful when providing a backup route to a primary link. To verify your static routes, always use a show IP route command, which will show you your routing table. And the S code simply indicates a static route. So these that have the S source code or the S code based on the code list here tells us it is a static route. Another indicator that these routes are static route is take a look at the administrative distance. The administrative distance of static route is always one by default. Now, if you do a show IP route, this here is the IPv4 routing table. To see the IPv6 routing table, we can use a show IPv6 route command and we can also use a show running config command to see the static routes installed within our routing table or within our Cisco IOS. 
In this video, you have discovered the need for static routing on enterprise networks, and you have also explored various types of routes on a network. In the next video, we will be taking a look at actually configuring IPv4 static routing within a lab. I hope this video has been informative for you, and I hope to see you in the next one.